Hey folks, uh, Shannon back here with you for Taxi to Fly Shop, and we are going to go through the steps of tying this here Royal Coachman. One of the things I'm going to show you right here is how to make these wings here using some fingernail clippers. For this particular pattern, we're going to be using some white uh, feathers here, uh, you know, from, from the, the side here that you may be discarding uh, that you certainly can use for these wings. For the, um, the tail, we're going to be using golden pheasant tippet. This here is Montana fly here with that. Uh, and also we're going to be using some of this here. Instead of floss, we're going to use midge body thread here for the um, banding in the particular peacock. And then, of course, we got to have the, the peacock to be able to make this part here. And then our hackle is going, actually going to be our, uh, really, this is more of a furnace color because it has a brown and a black in it. And you can see I've got the bottom stripped off here for a certain reason. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started here on our Royal Coachman. I'm going to be using a size 12 hook here today. You can tie these in 12s, 14s, 16s. I've never really got them down into 18s. And as you can see, I have my trusty, dusty Norvice fly tying system. The thread I'm going to be using today is 80 in black Vivas. And I'm using a pair of Dr. Slick scissors um, as well. I'm going to get our thread started. I'll go ahead and put in a quick half hitch on that. And I'm going to put up a little background here you can't see it but i can which is going to help me tremendously oh yeah much much better so we start we're going to get us a thread base on here right quick and i want to bring my thread up to the area where i want my wings to be placed okay now this is really important now i'm going to take uh once i find them i had them here just a moment ago a pair of fingernail clippers up right here they are right in front of me just your regular pair of fingernail clippers that you might use here and what we are going to do is we're going to take this feather here and what we're going to do is we're going to strip off some of these webby parts down here at the bottom just like so just like that you folks can see that right there then we're going to take our clippers and we are going to do this right here we're going to come in and me holding up this eye might be a little bit, bit difficult for me i want to come in here like so take the natural curve of my nippers, as you can see right there, trim it, okay? Just like so. We're gonna turn the feather over. See if you can see it right there. Down in there, where's my camera? There it is, right down in there. You see that right there? So I'm gonna come right in here. I've got it turned over this time, backwards. And I am doing this backwards, so I wanna have this in here like this. Cut. So right there we have one wing. See the natural curve of that right there? Looks real nice. Let me go ahead and trim the other one up right quick. That is a trick that Roger Lowe showed me several years ago back in the 90s and it's really a great way to keep uh, from wasting some feathers or some feathers that you might not use as much. You just might use for telling materials, things like that. But you can get the full use out of those expensive capes and uh, saddles and things like that for sure and, and it really makes an awesome wing you certainly can use hackle tip wings um, you know for this here as long as it's white and then one of the biggest differences between a royal wolf and a royal coachman is your tail material and your wing material but as you can see right here I have a matching set of white wings that we're going to put up here on this particular pattern and with the natural curve you see it gives us a natural curve so you want to put those two together like that and then i'm going to take those wings and i know how tall i want my wing i want to lay that up here on my hook i want to take my thread go loose loose like that make sure they're setting on top perfect then i'm going to start winding back as i wind back i want to start to pick up on that like so and then right there i got my stem broke off i got a nice little taper all right so here's the next best thing about these wings we just take our fingers and we just set them up look at that you're not going to have any prettier wings than that right there. And then just some crisscross wraps in there if you want to, like that, just stabilize them. Boom, boom. Just like that. Just kind of wrap back up to them. And look at there. You got a beautiful set of hackle wings. Doesn't get any better than that. If you want to impress some folks with just a really, really awesome looking fly, that's how you do it right there. 
these actually are very, very durable. They fish really well and they are, they just look great. Really is a high quality fly for sure right there. I want to grab my fine point scissors here, Dr. Selects. I want to get my golden pheasant tippet in natural. This is some really, really good stuff here. I just want to take time to thank everybody who voted for me in the March Madness Fly Time competition. I did make it to the Elite Eight, and I lost to Mr. Sean Crow there in the Elite Eight. And I appreciate everybody's votes. And this is the particular fly that I submitted for, for that. And uh, I thought it was an awesome tie. I thought it was just super, super clean. So our tail material is going to be golden pheasant tippet. Gonna reach in here, snip me off several of these fibers, just like so, as you can see here. Wanna make sure we get this tied in here. Take my thread, make, I put a little counterclockwise twist, nice and easy, make sure it's on top. I got a little straggler, we'll take care of that there in just a moment. Make some wraps and get that secured, okay? Not a problem with that guy. I'm gonna take my fine point scissors, wham, no problem at all, okay. We've got that secured in. I'm just gonna smooth out this body just a smidge here with my Norvice. Then we have these available at the shop. And if you like to place an order at the shop, due to the COVID-19, we are doing, I'm furloughed. Um, as a lot of you folks know, I'm kind of laid off right now. But um, if you need to place an order, do so. The owners are going in and they are actually fulfilling those orders and and sending those out. So go ahead and do that. If you're watching this video after everybody's back from the quarantine stuff, then certainly give us a shout. We can get that out to you there as well. So I've tied in some peacock here and I'm just easily gonna wrap up the back part of this body here. Just like say, watching a hook point, okay? And as I mentioned earlier about this fly first being tied up in New York City back in the 1800s, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that New York City looked a lot different back then than it does today. Um, you know, that used to be some really uh, amazing uh, wildlife habitat up there. And if you go uh, south of the city toward Pennsylvania, there's an amazing fishery, the West Branch of Delaware River, which is fantastic, and had a chance to fish that last June, and it's amazing. So as you can see right here, we have the back part of this band. And I'm going to vary off of the pattern just a little bit here. And I'm actually going to use this um, thread, the midge thread here from Montana Fly. And the reason why I'm using that is because I don't have any red floss. It looks really good. And I think it will fish really well. But certainly the floss is the one that you would typically use on this. So we're going to just get that tied in there briefly like so. I'm going to make some wraps come back like this and I'm going to go over the um, peacock in the back just a smidge so I want to start here and make sure my attention is tight here on my Norvice let's go ahead and get get us a band going here like this and the band was originally put in so it would keep the um, the peacock from coming apart and that's how that happened. So we're gonna build us up our nice little red band in here. I don't know about y'all, but on my end, that looks really good. And the ones that I've tied with it just look super, super sharp. So there we go, that looks really good right there. Come here to a finishing point. Awesome. Gonna bring my thread back. <clears throat> gonna capture that, and I left me room to tie over top of that there. You see that? Reach in here with those Dr. Slick fine point scissors. Put another little half itch. Perfect. Y'all see that in there? Hope that looks really good. It's just an awesome looking band. Now floss, when you use your floss in here, you have to understand that sometimes these floss, there's multiple, multiple um, layers uh, to the floss. You only want to use one single layer of that floss in there, okay? So if you've got multiple layers that are weaved together, you will, you want to get it down to where you have one single strand of floss when you tie um, with the floss. The other thing too with floss is it, it, it if you have any roughness on your fingers, um, it can really tear that bad boy up. I want to take our other piece of peacock hurl here that I got real close to the eye. 
uh, of it. It's just a little bit better quality. I want to build that up just a smidge right there right quick. And I want to take my thread and put it over here. And I want to put my bobbin on the bottom bobbin cradle. There we go. So I'm going to wrap back over top of that floss just a smidge. And then there we go. Look at that right there. It's pretty sharp, isn't it? I'm just going to take and wrap this all the way up to the wings. And for me, I'm just going to kind of come in front of the wings. Oops. Nice thing about those wings. You can get it and move it. And I'm just going to capture that right there. Looks pretty sharp. Capture. Wham. Pull the wings back out of the way. No problem. This is thin. Just break it off. Awesome. Now I want to take my thread, put it right behind the wings. The next thing that we have to have is our feather. <clears throat> And one of the things that I do on these feathers is if you noticed on the bottom side, I have actually stripped off those barbules. Now the side that's facing you is the shiny side. So I have the dull side facing me here. And I really love the, um, the variation of this. I'm gonna bring my stem up here. I wanna capture it like that. I wanna go behind it. Oops, I got it turned the wrong way. I apologize. There we go gonna come in here like that capture it go front capture get that right there get that all secured in there right quick we are in good shape right there perfect kind of come up here I've got a nice little ramp built up on the on the front of this fly here so we're gonna get some really really nice wraps and the one thing you can do with those wings is you can move them out of your way so now I want to use a rotating feature on my Norvice and I want to try to get these wraps placed in here real nice, side by side. This, and then I want to come in here like this, fold those backs, and get a wrap or two in front like that. Make sure it's back. And then I'm just going to use my rotating feature on my vise. This feather's got a little curve to it. Anyway, there we go. I'm going to bring my thread back over. I'm going to capture that stem in there like so. One, two. I want to take my half hitch tool here. Just so you guys can see that. Typically I would just do it with my fingers. Wham, like that. I'm going to secure my thread out of the way. So you can see we've got a really, really clean, clean looking fly right there. I want to come in with my Dr. Slick fine point scissors. Trim it. Come in here, trim it, wham, just like that. Boom, awesome. Now I'm gonna get my whip finish tool, Griffin whip finish tool. Come in here, one, two, three, looks really good. And I can do a double whip, one, two, three, boom, just like that, reach in there, wham, awesome. So right there we have a completed Royal Coachman a very, very traditional dry fly known throughout the, the United States and other countries right there. It works. I don't know why it works, but it works. Well, you guys, I hope you folks have the confidence now to try some of these hackle cut wings here. Tie this pattern up. You can tie it uh, with a yellow band. We call that a Carolina. And if you put a green band in it, we call that a Tennessee. And we actually tie those in wolf styles, and I should do a video on those as well. Appreciate you folks joining in here with us today, watching How to Tie with your guide, Shannon Messer. Have any questions, give us a shout, 1-828-488-3333. Also, you can send me an email at shannon at tuckflyshop.com. I'm still getting those emails, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, folks, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And Instead of saying tight lines, how about you guys go out there and tie up some great flies? Take care. Bye-bye.